Hi, I'm Eric Voss and Alien Covenant is here along with some questions about how exactly this story fits in the overall timeline of the Alien franchise. Now, I am a huge fan of the Alien movies. The first two are honestly my favorite films. Unpopular opinion, I know. And even as the franchise got weirder and in some cases not so great, I've always had a soft spot for the sci-fi elements and the backstory of all of these movies. So in this video, I'm going to explain the full complicated Alien timeline, including the non-canon Alien vs. Predator movies and why people don't consider them canon. Like, come on, is it just because people don't like them? Like, they still happen. We shouldn't just brush them off, right? The story is more interesting than that. And quick heads up, I'm gonna talk about major plot details from all of the Alien movies, including a few minor things from Alien Covenant that I don't think are spoilers, but you might think they're spoilers. So if you haven't seen it yet and just want to go in completely blind, you have been warned. Okay, so when Ridley Scott announced that he was was making Alien Covenant, he said it wouldn't be an exact sequel to Prometheus, which remember ended with Elizabeth Shaw and David leaving LV-223 for the engineer's home world. Instead, Alien Covenant follows a separate crew in the same universe on a ship called the Covenant as they seek to establish a human colony on a new world, and it all takes place a decade or so after the events of Prometheus. So it's kind of a non-sequel sequel, but still a prequel to the original Alien? Now, I know that's confusing, so let's go back and chronologically work our way forward through the whole timeline. Okay, so Prometheus established the earliest events at 3.2 billion years BC. That prologue scene showed the engineers leaving ancient Earth as one of them stayed behind, drinking this black liquid and dissolving into a waterfall. And this sacrifice is considered the origin of all life on Earth. And the promo site for Prometheus included its own timeline for the Whalen Corporation, including the birth of of Peter Wayland in 1990. And of course, the company becomes this juggernaut of technology, and Wayland gives a legendary TED Talk in 2023 that outlines his vision of building better worlds. Then, two years after that, in 2025, Wayland creates David, the first-generation android that would go on as a model for all the others afterward. David 8, the one in Prometheus, and Walter, the one in Alien Covenant. That also includes later androids like Ash in Alien and Bishop in Aliens. Okay, so then decades pass, and in 2089, that scene in Prometheus shows Shaw and Holloway discovering ancient cave paintings in Scotland, showing an engineer pointing to a star map. And then four years after that, in 2093, they arrive at LV-223 on a mission funded by Wayland. And of course, this brings us to the main events of the movie Prometheus, which I don't need to fully recap here, just know that everyone loved it and no one had a problem with it. But the key reveal here involves the engineers. So over the years, they became unhappy with the monsters they created, the human race. So they plan to wipe us out with a bioweapon, this black goo that infects us and turns us into even uglier monsters. So when David awakens the surviving engineer, that guy plans to head to Earth to begin that process but he's foiled when his ship is disabled and he gets killed and impregnated by the trilobite squid creature that Shaw had cut out of her womb earlier in the movie. And this all results in this little cutie, the Deacon. It looks like a xenomorph, but it's not, at least not yet. It's probably an early stage, but more on this later. So it seems like Ridley Scott's idea here is that the xenomorphs are a combination of a few ingredients. Bioweaponry created by the advanced race, the engineers, the engineers themselves, and and Shaw, whose human womb incubated the trilobite and who unleashed it on the engineer. And if you think about it, that sets up some clever cyclical irony for both the engineers and the human race as co-creators of the instrument of their own destruction. But this brings us to Alien Covenant, which takes place about 10 years later, around 2103. And again, I'm not planning on saying too much about this movie. I don't want to ruin it for anyone. But if you don't want to hear anything about Alien Covenant, you can skip to this time. Okay, so in 2103, the crew of the Covenant arrives on this lush, beautiful world, but this is also the home world of the Engineers. Shaw and David were headed there at the end of Prometheus, and now the Covenant crew has found their ship. And again, the Michael Fassbender android that we see in this movie isn't David 8, he's Walter. And without saying too much, Covenant does go deeper into the history of this line of androids, and it shows how really David, not Shaw, was the actual main character of Prometheus. And the events of the original Alien film take place place not too long after this, in 2122. There's actually some fun references in Alien Covenant that imply how close in time the two movies are. Like the Covenant crew calls their ship's central computer Mother, just like the Nostromo crew does in Alien, suggesting that they're the same
same technology. Now, it sounds like we may still see another movie, or movies, taking place in this 20 year gap between Covenant and Alien. Ridley Scott actually said that four more Alien movies are in development. Some of these could also take place between Alien and Aliens, while Ripley is in hypersleep, or even later in the timeline. But we now know that one of these four movies is Alien Awakening. He said it would go Prometheus, Awakening, then Covenant. And my theory is that Awakening will tell the story of the events that led from the Deacon on LV-223 to the full xenomorph form that we see in Covenant. Okay, so the rest of the main Alien timeline is pretty straightforward. These are the classic movies that started it all, really the best sci-fi movies of all time. And yes, I'm including Star Wars in that because Star Wars is a fantasy, not science fiction. Yes, there is a difference. The original Alien is set in 2122 with the Nostromo responding to the distress call on LV-426. They find the Derelict, which is the ancient ship of the engineer, which by the way, wasn't called the engineer yet because Ridley Scott hadn't yet written this backstory. Instead, this guy for years was just called the space jockey. Anyway, this leads to Kane getting infected by a face hugger, the infamous chestburster scene, and Ripley narrowly escaping with Jonesy. And then James Cameron's Aliens takes place 57 years later in 2179 when Ripley is awakened from hypersleep and sent back to LV-426 on a rescue mission with Colonial Marines where it quickly becomes game over man until Ripley says get away from her you bitch and fights the alien queen. I don't know if you can tell I'm a huge super nerd about this movie. And then Alien 3 takes place right after that with Ripley crash landing on the prison colony Fiorina 161 or Fury 161. She learns that she has an alien queen embryo gestating inside her so Whalen can get its hands on the xenomorph. Ripley doesn't care, she kills herself and the baby by jumping into a fire. Then the fourth movie, Alien Resurrection, goes even crazier, jumping ahead 200 years to 2379 when the United Systems military uses Ripley's blood collected from Fury to clone her. Ripley's DNA has fused with the xenomorphs and now she has super strength and acidic blood. So they extract the alien queen from Ripley and use it to breed even more xenomorphs and a xenomorph human hybrid on the ship Auriga, which in the end crashes into the earth, supposedly killing all the xenomorphs. Okay, so that's as far into the future that the alien timeline goes, but I've been leaving out a big part of the cinematic history, the two Alien vs. Predator movies. Now when it comes to the timeline, people have stopped talking about these because they're no longer considered canon, but why is that? So when Ridley Scott returned to the Alien franchise, basically said that when it comes to the movies, only the movies with Ripley are considered canon, and that Prometheus in these new Alien movies would establish the canon Xenomorph backstory leading up to the Nostromo mission. So Scott is basically pretending that Alien vs. Predator and Alien vs. Predator Requiem didn't happen. Actually, Damon Lindelof, the co-writer of Prometheus, said that when he brought up Alien vs. Predator to Ridley Scott, Ridley Scott gave him this dirty look. But really, that's Ridley Scott's decision to make. He's the guy who directed the first Alien film from the vision of screenwriters Dan O'Bannon and Ron Schusett. And the studio that owns this property, 20th Century Fox, has basically given the reins to Scott to decide what is and isn't part of this timeline, and I'm pretty okay with that. Still, what was this alternate history from Alien vs. Predator? So even though it's been overwritten by Prometheus, let's still talk about it because it's pretty interesting. So the Alien vs. Predator backstory was based loosely on the late 80s comic series Aliens vs. Predator, and that goes more into the history of the Predators, a tribe of hunters known as the Yaucha, and they end up dealing with their own xenomorph infestation, actually teaming up with humans. And in the first Alien vs. Predator movie, writer Paul W.S. Anderson used pieces of this comic's backstory along with research into Aztec mythology and theories by Eric Von Daniken that extraterrestrials helped ancient cultures build pyramids. So in Alien vs. Predator, there's a history sequence that establishes the earliest point in the timeline as 2996 BC. It shows the predators on Earth working with ancient human cultures. They taught them how to build and they were worshipped as gods. Now the predators returned every hundred years using the humans to breed xenomorphs that the predators would battle in a sacred ritualistic combat. And if the predators ever lost the battle, they would use their self-destruct mechanism to make sure nothing survived. The idea being that this is why so many of these ancient cultures were lost to history. So the main events of the movie take place in 2004 in a pyramid in Antarctica, and it ends with a chestburster popping out of the predator, creating a predalien, which is a mix of both xenomorph and predator. And that predalien becomes the primary threat in Alien vs. Predator Requiem, 
which takes place in rural Colorado and features some pretty disgusting violence to pregnant women. Regardless, in my mind, all this backstory with the ancient human cultures is pretty interesting. And yeah, there were definitely some parallels between this history and the new one that Ridley Scott established in Prometheus, with the engineers replacing the predators as the godlike beings who guided early humans. But yeah, the timeline is totally different now. Like Ridley Scott extended the earliest point of the timeline from around 3000 BC to 3 billion BC. And if you assume the engineer and the deacon to be the genesis of any carnation of a xenomorph, which definitely seemed to be Scott's implication, that pushes the xenomorphs into the future, popping up somewhere between 2093 and 2122, instead of running around in our present day. And again, that exact xenomorph origin point seems to be what Alien Awakening will be about. Now, of course, if you really stretch things, there are some ways that these movies could all coexist. Like, maybe the Deacon wasn't the origin of the Xenomorph, and elsewhere in the universe they've been locked in this millennia-old ritualistic combat with the Predators. Or, also possible, the Predators could have, like, gone back in time to ancient Earth and brought a few facehuggers with them. I mean, I don't know. Crazier bullshit has happened in movie timelines before. <coughs> Terminator Genesis. But really, as much as I honestly love the Predator movies, I don't want to be forced to contextualize the alien history in the Predator universe. Like, I think it's best to consider the Alien vs. Predator crossover movies as separate side adventures that you're free to enjoy or not enjoy. Personally, I'd rather trust Ridley Scott's vision. Like, bringing back that space jockey and ending Prometheus on this striking image of the Deacon suggests that he's got a pretty good idea of the overall world of the story, even if some of the characters in that world act pretty dumb sometimes. I'm just grateful to look forward to the future of this franchise again. Like sure, it might not ever be as great as Alien and Aliens, but the existential themes and mythology of the engineers and the Wayland androids, and the heart-pounding suspense and horror, which are still top-notch, all these things make this series something that I will always be fascinated by. And I'll probably be a really annoying fanboy to debate if you ever start hating on them. Okay, that covers the up-to-date timeline of the Alien movies, canon and non-canon. In. But keep an eye out for other videos that we might be doing on Alien Covenant on this channel. Like, I'm curious to know what you think of the movie and what questions you have after seeing it. So if you like this video, please hit like and subscribe to New Rockstars. You can also contribute to us on Patreon. Thanks so much to all of our current patrons, especially Daniel Hopkins. You can hit me up on Twitter, at EA Voss, with any thoughts you have about Alien Covenant or any Alien movie. Or follow New Rockstars on Twitter, at New Rockstars, for updates on our videos. Okay, thanks. <coughs> 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 It's a chest burster. It's coming out of my chest. It's, it's cute. It's a cutie. It's a cutie. Ow, ow. <laughs>